Hey there, in this video we are going to do several different trig proofs that involve using double angle identities for sine and cosine. So we're going to tackle some proofs that involve using double angle identities and the first one we're going to look at is this one right here. So we've got that sine of 2 theta times secant of theta minus sine theta is just equal to sine theta on the other side. So as always, we try to think about which side we're going to start with. And given that that side looks a lot more complex, we're going to start with that side. So the first step here is if you notice that you have some trig functions that involve double an angle and some that do not, a good first step is to make a replacement there for the ones that involve double an angle. So this sine of 2 theta here, we can write as 2 sine theta cos theta. There's only one double angle identity for sine, so it's not even a choice to make there, and that we have that. Now while I'm at it, I'm going to replace this with 1 over cosine. And then I'm going to put that on the end there, minus sine theta. We get to that stage and we can look at it and say, well, we have cos theta here and this is times one over cos theta, which is the same as dividing by. So a person could cross them out right now because they're going to cancel each other out. Or if you wanted to, you could write a step in there that you're multiplying the whole thing to sine theta cos theta if you prefer over cos theta. If you want to do that, you can do that and then divide them out, it's up to you. But the long and short of it is you're gonna have two sine theta minus sine theta, which those again, you have to recognize that those are like terms, two of something minus one of something is just one of those things, sine theta, which is equal to what we started it to be. Needless to say, that'd be a lot harder to start with this and get it complicated up to looking like the other side. All right, let's try another one here. So this identity that we're gonna prove involves a fraction on the left that has both a double angle expression for cosine and sine, and then a single trig expression on the other side, single trig function on the other side. So we're gonna start with this side and see what we can do with it. A great first step again is to change each of those things to something that we know that it's equal to. Now I'm gonna start with the bottom because there's no choice involved with that. I only have one option for that, which is two sine theta cos theta. But on the top, I am gonna choose something that's gonna help me simplify that. And it has to do with the fact that I have this one here. So if you think about it, if I have a one, I'm gonna choose something here that is gonna allow me to eliminate that one. Now, if you're not sure what I mean by that, the identity I am going to put there is I am going to replace cos of 2 theta with 2 cos squared theta minus 1. So that in yellow up there I turned into this. That's one of the three. Now that's the easiest one to use in this case. The reason being, if you notice here, I have this 1 and this minus 1 here. They are going to add to 0. At the risk of stating the obvious, 1 minus 1 is 0. If you want to, you can do this. And the other thing that's gonna happen is I have a cosine on the bottom and a cos squared on the top. So one of those two cosines on the top is going to cancel with one of the cosines on the bottom. If you wanted to, you could write it out like this. If you don't like starting to cross out exponents and things like that, cos squared, you could write as cos theta cos theta. This would make it nice and clear to whoever's following what you're doing. Easy to follow. So you could say those are going to go away. And at the same time, actually, 2 on the top and the bottom, 2 divided by 2, that's going to divide to 1. So those are going to disappear. And you're going to just have cos theta over sine theta, which is equal to what we want it to be over here, which is cotangent. So we can write that. And then we can just put this down at the bottom to show that we made the two sides equal there. All right. Now again, this would be pretty hard to start on that right side and start to make it look like the left side. It could be done, but you'd be making things more and more complicated as you go. So that's probably the best approach working on the left. One more here. Similar thing with a fraction on the left here, but it 
only involves double angle identities for cosine. And it's 10 squared on the other side, but we'll see how that comes about as we go. So we're going to start over here. Now I'm going to choose a different identity for that and for that, and to see why it has to do with that one again. If we have one minus this here, whatever I replace it with here, we're going to have to imagine that there's some brackets there like that. And I'm going to try and do the same thing of eliminate the one in my next step. So if I'm subtracting here, I'm going to want the one with a positive one in there. And the one with a positive one in there is the one that starts with one, one minus two sine squared x. But on the bottom, I have, this is plus cos two x. So when I say one plus this, I want the one that has a a minus one in there, and that's the one I used in the last example, which was two cos squared x minus one. And if I go with that, I'm gonna write this again, but without the brackets on the top. So this is one minus one, and minus minus two sine squared x is plus two sine squared x. Just really make sure you notice that that has to be a plus there, like that. And on the bottom, we're gonna end up with 1 plus 2 cos squared x minus 1. And a great next step would be to just simplify that. 1 minus 1 gives us 0. So I'm just going to have 2 sine squared x on the top. And on the bottom, the 1 minus 1 again is 0. So we're going to just have 2 cos squared x. This one's kind of similar to the last one here. But the 2's are going to cancel here, that and that and we just have sine squared x over cos squared x. If you want to, you can write it again, but I think we can see what's happening there. So sine squared x over cos squared x. Sine over cos is tangent, so sine squared x over cos squared x is tan squared x, which is, if you remember, what we were working on, making it on the other side. So we can say, as our last step here, tan squared x equals tan squared x, left side equals right side, so we've done it. Okay, we're going to do one more here. So this one we have an identity where the only function involved is sine on both sides, except that when you look carefully, this is sine x on this side, but this is sine of 3x on this side. Now, none of those are double angle identities, but this is actually sine of triple an angle. The focus of this video is double angle identities, so we're going to have to think of something else we can do here. And the trick we can use here is we can use an identity that you've hopefully learned previously, an addition identity for sine. If you haven't learned that, have a look at the video that I have on that. But we can write it as sine of 2x plus x. So we can write it as the sum of two angles there. 3x is 2x plus x. Now how that helps is that we can use the sum identity for sine and write that in terms of individual trig functions. So that sum identity for sine says that this is equal to sine of the first angle, sine 2x, times cosine of the second angle, cos x, plus cosine of the first angle, cos 2x, times sine of the second angle, sine x. So we turned sine 2x plus x into this whole thing here. But now we can use some of the double angle identities we're using here for sine of 2x and for cosine of 2x to replace each of those. Now there's only one choice for this one, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Sine of 2x is equal to 2 sine x cos x, and then we have this still multiplied by cos x. And then we're going to choose something for this. Now there's several choices. You can actually choose any one of them and get it to work. The one I'm going to choose is cos squared x minus sine squared x. So I've replaced the cosine of 2x with cos x minus sine x, and I've replaced the sine of 2x with 2 sine x cos x. Oh, and I forgot my sine x that was right here. Can't forget that. If I simplify what I have here, I have 2 sine x cos x times cos x, so the simpler way to write that is 2 sine x cos squared x. And here, this is a binomial, so we're going to have to multiply this out. Sine x times cos squared x, we're going to write 
sine x cos squared x. And then sine x times minus sine squared x is minus sine cubed x. Now we can further simplify this because if you look at it, this and this are actually like terms. This is like this says 2mn squared, and this is like this says mn squared, like there's one of them. So together we have three of them. So I'm going to write this as 3 sine cos squared x. And then I can put that there as well, minus sine cubed x. Now it's starting to look a little more like what I have up there, which is sine cubed. It's not 4 sine cubed like this, but we'll, we'll get there. The thing that we have to change now is this cos squared, because there's no cos squared in our answer, so we're going to change that. We want to change it into sine. So what we're going to use is the identity that says that sine squared plus cos squared is 1, or namely that we can replace cos squared x with 1 minus sine squared x. And then we have, oops, I forgot my x up there, 3 sine x, and then we have minus sine cubed x there. Right, so we replace cos squared with 1 minus sine squared. Now we have everything in terms of sine and sine squared. We just are left with multiplying that out and that out. So the first one, 3 sine x times 1 is 3 sine x. And then 3 sine x times minus sine squared is minus 3 sine cubed x minus sine cubed x. And then our last step to get it to look like what we want it to look like there is realizing these are like terms and we can add those together. So we can make this 3 sine x minus 4 sine cubed x because we have minus 3 of them minus 1 of them which makes minus 4 of them. And that is what we have on the other side. So we're going to put this down here so that we can show clearly that we made the two sides equal to each other. 3 sine x minus 4 sine cubed x is equal to that, or left side equals right side. So we did it. All right, now, at the beginning, you might have wondered, why did we start on this side? Because usually, often, people will start on the side that looks more complicated, and sure, that side looks more complicated, but there's not a lot you can do with this, given that it's already just sine x involved there, and you could, but you'd basically have to do all of the steps we did in reverse, and it's not very obvious sometimes what you have to replace and everything. So sometimes the thing that looks simpler is the place where you're going to start. So hopefully that example and the previous examples help you see how you can use double angle identities in doing trig proofs. Mm -hmm.